Salve te omnes. Hi everybody. Let's review a little what we learned in the last lesson. Do you remember how to say, the farmer works and sleeps? Agricola laborat et dormit. Now say the teacher teaches and the student learns. Magistra docet et discipula discit. This contains the verbs from the prophet we learned. Qui docet discit. He who teaches learns. Now try to say, you work and write and study and sleep. Tu laboras et scribis et studes et dormis. Did you remember that scribis has a short i sound? Finally, what is the student reads? Discipula legit. Don't worry if you didn't remember them all. We'll be reviewing them more as we go along. But if you feel unsure or didn't get any of them, it might be a good idea to rewatch lesson one. Look at the next sentence now. Magistra discipulam docet. Magistra discipulam docet. The teacher teaches the student. Do you see how discipula changed form? The subject and object of the verb have different forms so that we can tell them apart. The subject is the doer of the verb, and this is the default form of the noun, which we saw in the last lesson. The object is the thing the verb is being done to, and in Latin we have to change the form of the noun, or decline it, in order to tell it apart from the subject. So if we want to switch the people and say, the student teaches the teacher, we say, discipula magistram docet. Discipula magistram docet. Did you also notice that the verb comes at the end of the sentence? This is where the verb customarily goes, but actually word order is pretty flexible in Latin. Since the subject and object have different forms, we know that discipula magistram docet and magistram discipula docet and discipula docet magistram have the exact same meaning. The only difference is the emphasis, but that's a more advanced topic. The key to remember is that the first and last positions of the sentence are the most important, so this is where the verb usually goes. Can you guess what an epistola is? If you know what an epistle is, it should be pretty easy. Following the last example, try to say now, the poet writes a letter. Poeta epistolam scribit. Poeta epistolam scribit. Since verbs conjugate differently for each subject, Latin can be a very economical language. We don't need to mention the subject if it's obvious. In fact, we shouldn't unless we're trying to put emphasis on it. So these are complete sentences. Lego, labo, dormio. I read, I work, I sleep. As well as Julius Caesar's famous saying, Weni Widi Wiki. I came, I saw, I conquered. However, this is in past tense, which we haven't covered yet. And note the pronunciation, which is probably different from what you have heard. The V in Latin actually makes a W sound like a W. Try to say now, I write and you read. Scribo et legis. Scribo et legis. A verb that allows us to make much of our new noun forms is widere. What does this sentence look like it means? Remember, the Latin language died before cameras were invented. Poetam video. Poetam video. This verb has roots in the word visual and video. It has a few other meanings, but here it means to see. So can you interpret this sentence now? I see the poet. Do you see why it's not the poet sees? Because the M added to poeta signifies that it's the object, and video is the conjugation for I see. How do we say the poet sees? 
Poeta with it. Poeta with it. How about the student sees the letter? Discipula epistulam with it. Discipula epistulam with it. Recalling that the infinitive is videre, how do we say you see the teacher? Magistram vides. Magistram vides. And you read the letter? Epistulam legis. Epistulam legis. Look at the next sentence. Can you guess the meaning? A hint for the last word is that the words imbibe and beverage are derived from it. Agricola aquam bibit. Agricola aquam bibit. That's right, this means the farmer drinks water. And how would you say you study the water? Aquam studies. Aquam studies. So far, Latin is pretty easy, right? If you have a large vocabulary in English, you will be able to guess and quickly learn a lot of Latin words. It helps too if you know Spanish. Let's ramp it up a little now. Discipulae magistra. Discipulae magistra. This means the student's teacher, but we can also say magistra discipulae. Because word order is flexible in Latin. These two phrases have the exact same meaning. Some scholars claim the second is more common, but this topic is controversial. So we can think of this either as the student's teacher or as the teacher of the student. Note also that the diphthong AE in Latin is pronounced I, like eyeball. Try to figure out this sentence now. Epistulum poetae lego. Epistulum poetae lego. I read the poet's letter, or I read the letter of the poet. And this one? Aquam agricolae bibis. Aquam agricolae bibis. You drink the farmer's water, water of the farmer. Try this one now. Discipula epistola magistrae scribit. Discipula epistola magistrae scribit. Did you figure it out? The student writes the teacher's letter. This noun declination is kind of like an adjective. However, adjectives have a different form, as we will see now. Longum epistolam scribo. Longum epistolam scribo. I write a long letter. Easy, right? We just match the ending of the adjective with that of the noun. It's not always as simple as this, though, as we'll see later. Can you guess what the next adjective means? A hint is the word magnify. Magistra magnum discipulam ducat. Magistra magnum discipulam ducat. Who is large in this sentence, the teacher or the student? That's right, the teacher teaches the large student. Now, who is large in this sentence? Magistra magna discipulam ducat. Magistra magna discipulam ducat. This time it's the teacher. Word order is so flexible in Latin that adjectives can come before or after the noun, or even somewhere else entirely in the sentence. However, outside of poetry, adjectives will usually come next to the noun they modify. But this is why declensions are so important in Latin. We can't correctly figure out the meaning if we don't pay careful attention to the declensions and conjugations. Do you know the word pulchritude? Knowing that this means beauty will help you figure out the next new word. Magistra magna discipulum pulchrum docket. 
Magistra Magna Discipulum Pulchrum Docket. The large teacher teaches the beautiful student. Now, the next sentence has two new words in it, but I'm confident you can guess what they mean. Magistra docet sed discipula non discit. Magistra docet sed discipula non discit. The teacher teaches, but the student doesn't learn. In Latin, we don't need all this do and does business. We just throw non in the sentence to negate the verb. Now, what do you think the following sentence means? Magistra docet sed nemo discit. Magistra docet sed nemo discit. Did you guess that nemo means no one or nobody? Now we're going to read a story. That's pretty amazing after just two lessons, right? But it will be a very simple story using mostly what we've learned. There are two words you're going to have to guess the meaning of, though. To get the first one, think for a moment what the infinitive of a verb means in English. We know what scribo, scribis, and scribit mean. But what does scribere mean? I'll give away, though, that the word quad means because, since that would be hard to guess. Remember that quad means because. Magistra Agricolam scribera docet. Agricola studet et scribera discit. Epistolam pulcram scribit. Quad magistra bene docet. Agricola epistolam bene scribit. Sed nemo legit. Did you understand it? Kind of a sad ending, huh? Let's go through it in detail. In the opening sentence, we have scribera docet, which means teaches to write. We can use the infinitive of a verb when we want to say to read and to work, etc. This is done again in the second sentence where it says learns to write. Then it says he writes a beautiful letter, and notice we don't need to add he here since we know the subject is the farmer. Quad means because, as I said earlier. And then we have this word bene, which is also in the next sentence. Bene is contained in the words benevolent and beneficence, so it probably has something to do with goodness or kindness. But the ending doesn't match the ending of magistra, so it's probably not an adjective but an adverb. So from the two usages, we can guess that it means well, the adverbial form of good. The last two sentences then are, He writes a beautiful letter because the teacher teaches him well. The farmer writes the letter well, but no one reads it. That's all for now. If you like these lessons, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. There's a link below. And be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Gratias!